Y'all give it up for the one and only Pastor Jim Tavares. Give it up. Come on, come on. Join me in prayer. Father God, we come before you wherever we're at, Lord God. We invite you in to our living rooms. We invite you into our hearts. We invite you into our struggles and into our pains. And we're believing that you're going to bring renewal in every single one of them. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. What is up, Radiant Church? Man, I am so excited to be bringing God's word to you today. If I haven't had the honor of meeting you, my name is June Tavares, and I serve as your Radiant Brandon location pastor. So I want to, before I continue, I just want to take a moment to honor our lead pastor, Aaron Burke. Man, you just, you surprise me every season. You know, throughout this whole COVID crisis. He has, he's had such incredible leadership. He is a man of faith that says, hey, if God brought us to it, he's going to bring us through it. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Amen. So I'm just so grateful for you and for your leadership. It's an honor to be serving under you. Also, you know, wherever you're, you're tuning in from, whether it's from church online, Instagram right now, Facebook, wherever it is, I'm believing that God has a word that'll change your day. I believe he has a word that'll change your week, that'll change your month, and that'll change your year. Oh, come on. Can we come into an agreement today that 2020 isn't a waste, that 2020 will not be a mess? You know, I love the documentary, Michael Jordan, The Last Dance. And, you know, I, I love how Michael Jordan, he's the one that takes the last shot of the game when there's just seconds to the game being over. And if he, if he misses the shot, he loses the game. But if he makes it, he wins it. And a lot of players, they get a little nervous about that shot. But I love what Michael Jordan has to say. He said, why would I think about missing a shot I haven't taken? Why would you think about having 2020 a waste when it hasn't even passed you by? Last time I checked, we're just halfway through 2020, and I'm believing Romans 8.37, it says this, In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loves us. You know, I remember when I was just about to graduate high school, and I had a friend named Eddie P., and Eddie P. landed an incredible Fortune 500 company job. And I said, look at Eddie P. changing the world. And, you know, and, and I was just so happy for him. But he, he reached out to me. He encouraged me to apply to this job. And, you know, I, I was just graduating high school. So at the time, I had a net worth of about negative $10. So I thought... <laughs> I think that's a good idea, Eddie P. So I went ahead, I applied, I went, I went online, and two days later, I got an email from the company. And it said this, thank you so much for your application, but we are currently pursuing other applicants at this time. And I said, Eddie P, Eddie P, Eddie P. I think they must have had my application mixed up with someone else's. You know what, I'm gonna do them a favor, and I'm gonna apply again. Yeah, I'm going to apply again. I went online. I, you know, and there was this question in the beginning of the application. And it said, have you applied in the last six months? Well, it hadn't even been six weeks. I don't even think it was six days. But I had this imaginary conversation with the, with the application system. And I said, hey, listen, listen, the previous application didn't count because you guys must have mixed my application up with someone else's. So, so I applied again, and a few days later, could you believe that I got an email and it said, thank you for, for your application, but we are currently pursuing other applicants at this time. And at that moment, back-to-back -back losses, at that moment, I had to decide, am I going to get used to losing? And I know that some of you, you might be in a place where you're used to losing in your job, you're used to losing your happiness, you're used to losing in your finances, you're used to losing in your relationships. And you know, I had, I had to decide, am I going to get used to losing in my life? And you know, I could, I could have thought, hey, I already applied twice. Why would I apply again? But I actually thought, you know, I only applied twice. So I should apply again. And, you know, I, I went online and, you know, God, God, win this job for me. And I applied the three times. And would you know it? Your boy got hired. I got it. I got it. You see, I stopped referring to my losing record and started recognizing God's winning record. 1 Corinthians 15, 57 says this, because thanks be to God. 
He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And here's the question that I want us to wrestle with tonight. What do you say when the pain of life tells you the biggest of lies? What do you say when the pain of unemployment tells you you're never going to get hired again? What do you say when the pain of illness tells you you're never going to get healthy again? What do you say when the pain of disappointment tells you you're never going to have victory? But today, I'm believing for God to clear some things up in your life through his word. So I'm believing for victory to happen in your life. We're going to be in the book of Judges, chapter 6. And here's what you need to know about the book of Judges is that it's filled with people that God raised up to deliver his people, the people of Israel, from oppression and from struggle. And we're going to be going into chapter 6. And in chapter 6, we find the people of Israel were going through a tough time. They were, they were being oppressed. The Bible says that the people of Israel would be planting their crops, and the Midianites and Amalekites would come in, take over their land, and ruin their crops. And the Bible says that Israel cried out to God, and God responded, responded by sending an angel of the Lord. And this angel of the Lord encounters a guy named Gideon. And he has this interaction with Gideon, and he tells Gideon, the Lord is with you. And Gideon responds with this. He says, pardon me, but if the Lord is with us, why has this happened to me? Uh, pardon me, Pastor Aaron, but if the Lord is with me, why hasn't Disney reopened? Come on. Pardon me, Pastor Jacob, but if the Lord is with me, why is my marriage falling apart? Pardon me, Pastor Kenton, but if the Lord is with me, why has my salary decreased significantly? Pardon me, Pastor Ross, but if the Lord is with me, why did my car break down and I have to have a Hoover? Like, why? Why did it have to happen? And so Gideon says this. He speaks out of the pain of his heart, and here's what he says. And I felt it when he said that. He says, now the Lord has abandoned us. You know, if, if you are in so much pain that you feel the Lord has abandoned you, my first point is for you. Your pain doesn't disprove your purpose. Your pain doesn't disprove your purpose. I remember being a student, and I had a friend named Julio. And this, this guy, he was one of those friends that you really didn't do anything productive with. You pretty much just hung out. Like, you guys weren't going out to study. You weren't exercising. We were just hanging out. And I remember there was, a, when I was on my way one day to the usual place where we congregate for life-giving conversations <laughs> at school, and I remember Julio came up to me. He had a stern face, and he said, yo, these guys tried me, and I, I was like, well, wait a minute. Oh, for those of you that are students right now, here's what he said in your terminology. Yo, these guys throwing shade, no cap. <laughs> for those of you that don't understand either of those phrases, he basically said, hey, June, that group of gentlemen over there have disrespected me in a rude and malicious way. And at that point, I said, oh, man, it's about to go down. And all of a sudden, he turns around. And he says, let's go get them. And, you know, I wish I could tell you that I said, wait a minute, Julio, things are going too far. You're, you know, you're, you're getting a little hot-headed. You know, let's, let's find out what the Bible has to say about this. Let me tell you that Jesus said to love your enemies, that you're supposed to love others as yourself. But unfortunately, the teenage June basically just said, okay, let's go get them. And so we were, we were on our way. And, I, you know, when, you're start, when you start walking into conflict, you start analyzing a lot of things. I noticed that uh, there were two more people in their group than our group. I noticed that there was one person that was bigger than me. And I noticed that Julio was shorter than me. And I thought, okay, we have a problem. And so we were just a few feet away, and all of a sudden Julio turns around, and he says, nah, I'm just playing. I just wanted to know if you had my back. Wow. Yeah, in other words, what I did was communicate to him, I got you. You know, I don't know what fight you're walking into. Maybe it's the fight of depression. Maybe it's the fight of diagnosis. Maybe it's the fight of discouragement. And you're looking around and you're like, I don't know if anybody's got my back, but I got a solution. All you got to do is point back to the time where God proved it. When you didn't have enough money in the bank account. And all of a sudden, uh, man, you made it somehow. That was God 
proving it. When you had a broken heart and you're like, man, I don't know how I'm going to get through this. I don't even know if I'm going to be happy again. At that point, somehow you got through and God brought you joy. God proved it. When you thought, man, I don't even know if I'm going to make it out of this season. My, my family's on fire. I, I, I'm, always, I'm always having conversations and arguments with my loved ones. And for some reason, peace came into your home. That was God saying, I got you. I proved it. All you got to do whenever you face struggles, pains, when you never you face depression, all you got to do is say, if God be with me, who can be against me? Your pain doesn't disprove your purpose. You know, another thing that Gideon thought that was a lie was that he thought because of where he was from that God couldn't use him. And this is my second point. Your past doesn't disqualify your promise. See, that means that where you came from doesn't limit where God can take you. You know, every night I, I read my kids a story, and, and they're going to put a picture of my kids up. My oldest, that's my beautiful wife, Elizabeth, and my oldest is Isabella. Then I have Bethany, and then Lucas, and then the baby is Olivia. And, you know, I thought, you know what, instead of just reading a book, how about we write a story, guys? And they were excited about it. And so to get them talking, I said, okay, so what, what do you, who do you want in the story? And, you know, my, my girl said, we want no less than four princesses in the story. And I said, I got you, baby. I got you, princesses. Then, then I, I turned to Lucas, my son. And one thing you need to know about Lucas is he's a three-year-old kid, but he has a raspy voice. I mean, his voice is like a Louis Armstrong slash Jada Kiss voice. Like he, he's like, I asked him, so, so what, you know, what do you want to have? Who do you want in the story? And, and Lucas said, Daddy, I want a dragon, Daddy. And I said, I got you, Lucas. You got a dragon. And then I asked him, okay, so um, what do you guys want to happen in the story? And, and you know, my girl said, Daddy, I, I want them to have a horse, horses, and I want them to ride around in the forest and have fun, and I want them to have a, a pet rabbit that jumps around, and I want them to have a sheep, and I don't remember what the sheep did, but, you know, then I, then I turned to Lucas and said, Lucas, what do you want to happen in the story? Who do you, what, what do you want to happen? And Lucas said, Daddy, I want the dragon to breathe fire, Daddy. And I said, I got you, son. And I'm trying, to, I'm trying to fit all these different elements of the story, and I was trying to figure out where they end up. And, 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 and you know, that's what we do sometimes. Yeah. What we do is sometimes we try to fit in our future calling, our future purpose, our, 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 fu our future dreams into our past. And we see this in the book, uh, in, in this story, where, where God tells Gideon, go in the strength that you have and save Israel. And Gideon responds with this fascinating. He says, but how can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest and I'm the least of my family. How can I raise these kids right when I come from a dysfunctional family myself? How can I be the dad that I want to be when I never had the dad that I needed? How could I drop this addiction when it's been in my life and in my family's life for decades? How could I succeed in this when I fail so many times in that, but God is telling you the same thing he told Gideon. I will be with you. In other words, stop looking at your past and start realizing God's power. Your past doesn't disqualify your promise. You know, in this point in the story, Gideon decides, okay, I'm gonna do what you want me to do, God. So he recruits 32,000 men to his army. How many of you know that, that's, a, that's a lot of men? That's a lot of men. And we have it represented here in Epsom salt. This is Epsom salt and not anything else. And so, and this is, this is 32,000, 32,000 men. And if you can hold this. And the only problem was that he was going up against 135,000. And we're going to have Pastor Ryan here, 135,000. That's a big difference. 32,000, 135,000. How many know you don't need to be a mathematician to know that's, that's a mismatch? There's a problem there. But here's what God does. God looks at his lack, and God says, you have too many men. So here's what God does, if, you, if I can have that. God says, you need to take that amount down. And what God does is he takes less. He takes more out. So that's usually 
two and a half cups. There it is, two and a half. <laughs> Less against more. That's a huge problem. You know, and God says, well, you know, I think you still need less men. And Gideon's like, what is going? What is, I don't even think I'm going to, I don't think I'm going to win this battle. So here's what God, here's where God ended up with the, with the people of Israel's army. God brought them down to 300. So let me tell you what 300 looks like. That's what 300 looks like. Yeah, you heard of Leonidas' 300. This is Gideon's 300. That's what 300 looks like. Thank you, guys. See, at this point, I can just imagine the loss. I can imagine the emotions that Gideon has because he, he, he lost so many men. I can just imagine thousands of men walking off of the battle. And I also felt a deep sense of not being enough. You know, it might look like this in life. Man, I just saw their TikTok video. I can't dance like that. Like, I'm losing followers. I just, I just saw my bank account, and I don't have enough money. I lost my savings. I, I, just, I just recognize that I'm not gifted enough in life, and I lost my job. I just, I just saw myself in the mirror, and I'm not pretty enough. I lost my relationships. I'm still single. And you see, here's what, here's what God does at this point. God is trying to communicate to Gideon, and I believe he's trying to communicate to you that you don't need that many men because I got you. You see, if you're in a place right now where you don't know if you can continue because of what you lost, my third point is for you. What you lost isn't required for where God's taking you. That job you lost, don't worry about it. It isn't required for the job God's taking you. Whatever you lost, it isn't required for where God is taking you. And you know, the results of that battle was that God ended up confusing the enemy's army. They ended up fighting against each other. And Israel ran them off because God was trying to communicate to them, what you lost isn't required for where I'm taking you. I got you. I got you. You know, I love stories, and I started thinking about the recent events, about the racism, about the conflict, about social media tension, about, you know, all these different things, and I, and I started wondering, how is this going to play out? Because 10 years from now, I'm going to be sitting with my girls and my son, and I'm going to have to tell them not just about what has already happened, but about our response. As a family, as a community, as a church, as a state, and as a country. And more, the more I thought about it, the more I thought, man, I don't want to tell them a tragic story. And here's what a tragic story looks like. And then they murdered another black man. And then the riots began. And then we fought against our friends and family. And then our church became divided. And then we hated each other. And then violence broke out. But come on, the Bible says that Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. I'm believing God for a better story. I'm believing him for a better story. And here's what a better story might sound like. And then everyone saw the murder and injustice of our black brothers and sisters. And we all got together and wept because we felt each other's pain. And then we drew together and cried out to God. And we prayed. And then God changed so many hearts. And then violence was avoided and then the black community became loved and protected by law enforcement, by city officials, by churches, by neighbors. And then black lives mattered to everyone. And then God got all the glory. And then our land was healed. Come on, can you give God a praise? 
if you're believing for a better story today. He's got a better story for black men and women. He has a better story for my son Lucas 10 years from now. He has a better story for law enforcement. He has a better story for our church. He has a better story for our city. He has a better story for our nation. Wherever you're at, I'm gonna invite you into a prayer for our families, for our community, for our nation, because I'm believing for a better story tonight. Join me in prayer. Father, we just thank you so much because you are the God that makes better stories. Regardless of what's happened, you can bring us together. Regardless of what's happened, you can help all of us understand that we are all made in your image, that you don't die for the worthless, you die for the worthwhile. And right now, we are inviting your Holy Spirit. Change hearts, Lord. We are believing for a better story. In Jesus' name, we pray, amen. You know, a few weeks into my story that I was building with my kids, I asked them, okay, what do you guys want to happen this time in this chapter? And one of my girls, just out of nowhere, immediately said, Daddy, somebody needs to die. And I said, who has been teaching this child? What have you been watching on Disney Plus? And, you know, and then I started thinking about the story of God. And I started thinking about how God created us in his image and how everything was perfect, but sin entered the world and it separated us from God. And God looked at the situation and he sent his only begotten son to the earth, Jesus. And Jesus taught some incredible things. He healed so many people. But God looked down and said, just like my daughter Bethany, somebody needs to die. And God said, I don't want it to be you. I will provide my son. And the Bible says that they crucified Jesus. They killed him on the cross. They put him in the tomb. And I bet the enemy was saying, yeah, you might have had a good run with ministry. You might have taught incredible things, but where are you at now, Jesus? Yeah, you might have brought Lazarus, your boy from the dead, but where are you at now, Jesus? But on the third day, come on somebody. On the third day, Jesus rose from the dead. He conquered the sin. He conquered the grave. He conquered death. And at that point, God made it available for you to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior and have eternal life. And right now, you're, you've been putting it off for so long. But right now, tonight is a moment where you can accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. You know, some of you watching this, you might be thinking, man, I accepted Jesus before, but I really haven't been living the life that God's called me to. Well, tonight is your opportunity too. Whether you're on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Church Online, I just want you to type me, just M-E, just me, if you wanna be counted in this prayer of salvation, because it would be a privilege to lead you into a decision for Jesus. So join me in this prayer. Father God, we thank you so much. Right now, I invite you into my heart. I recognize that you died on the cross for my sins, and right now, I am deciding to follow you. In Jesus' name, we pray, amen. Give God a praise, come on. Church, that is what we do, man. 
I have loved being with you tonight. I hope you love the worship. I hope you love putting that focus on Jesus. Time of communion, time of giving, and what a powerful word. In the comments on Church Online, YouTube, Facebook, show Pastor June some love. Now, I just was looking at some of your comments. And, and unfortunately, they were calling you Pastor June, J-U-N-E. It's J-O-O-N, like, not like the month, like, like the man. So, so right in there, Pastor June, we love you. you. You tore it up. I want a better story. And I was challenged. What a good word. Love you, Pastor June and Elizabeth. They do a great job. And maybe you go, man, I like that guy. Where can I get to know that guy a little bit more? You can be part of the Brandon Dream Team. So you just go on our website, join the Dream Team, and show up this Sunday. We'll get you on a team. I love you guys. How about we end across Tampa Bay with our Radiant Church benediction. Let's say it loud. Let's say it proud. This week, I am moving towards Christ, towards community, and towards my calling. Because of Jesus, I am getting better, and I will keep coming back. We are radiant. I love you guys. Have a great week. See you Sunday.